Hello, my name is Camille and welcome to my channel. In this video I'm going to tell you how you can make your life so much easier if you're editing videos on a regular laptop like this. Like this MacBook Pro which isn't necessarily designed in order to be able to handle such workloads and everything could be choppy and the entire experience is really a lot frustrating. So in this video I'm going to show you all the tips and tricks on how to make this experience a lot smoother. So without any further ado, let's get started. Alright, so the first tip would be to get a very high quality external SSD drive in order to put your footage on the drive and also to be able to edit straight from the drive. And the drive that I'm using and I can highly recommend is very actually trendy, it was at least in 2019. It's the Samsung T5, it comes in three flavors, the 500GB, 1TB or 2TB. I am personally using the 1TB version. Uh, it also comes with different colors. It's it's very it's very small. Look at that. Look how small it is. It's it's lightweight. It's sturdy. It's actually shockproof. Uh, you can drop it from waist high and it will be just fine. And actually, Potato Jet was recently reviewing it. And if you plug it into your laptop, it sits here very tightly. So you can actually hold it like this. And he was testing it if the drive will fall into a lake. So I can recommend you watch this video if you want to learn more about the drive. It's really high quality, it's super fast and actually even some companies are making custom rigs in order to be able to record straight onto this drive from, uh, from some cameras like the Blackmagic for instance. So this drive is definitely a way to go. I will put the link uh, in the description of this, uh, of this video. And by the way, this video is not affiliated in any way with Samsung. I just, I just really enjoy this drive. It's, uh, it's a really good drive. Tip number two would be to work with lower resolution footage. For instance, if you're editing in Premiere Pro like I do, you can drop the playback resolution to half, one quarter or even one eighth of the original resolution and those files will play back more smoothly on your computer. And if the files are really heavy, like for instance footage from DJI Mavic 2 Pro drone is very heavy on the computer, the codec, the H.265 is very compressed in order to capture a lot of dynamic range and quality, so it's, it's known to be very Copy on some computers. So in these cases, you may need to resort to something called a proxy. And a proxy is a separate video file that is transcoded from your original footage that is usually lower quality and a codec that is much easier on the computer. So you can work with the proxy file. And then in Premiere Pro, when you actually render the project, it will replace the proxy with the original footage, which is the highest quality in order to have the highest quality in the final rendered video. And like I said, the thing with proxies is not only to drop resolution, but also it's very important to use an appropriate codec, because for instance, the codecs that are used in most consumer cameras, the H.264 or H.265, in case of the DJI Mavic 2 Pro, for instance, is very compressed in order to be able to record as much footage on the SD card. But on the computer, it's very heavy computationally wise, because it has to decode this footage in order to play it back. So it's very heavy on the processor, and that's why it's chopped so if you transcode it into a codec like for instance Apple ProRes, the file will be bigger but it will be much easier for the computer to actually work with this in your editing software and Gerald and Don actually has a fantastic video about different video codecs, which codecs to use to capture the video, to edit the video and to deliver the video to your clients or online or wherever you deliver your videos. So I can highly recommend this video, I will put the link in the description of this video so you can check it out after you're done with mine. There's one caveat however with proxies and that is if you are working with interpreted footage and by interpreted footage I mean that you for instance shoot in 60 or 120 frames per second in order to be able to slow it down and then in editing you interpret this footage by slowing it down to like 24 or 30 frames per second so it's slow motion and then you want to add a proxy to this kind of interpreted footage you actually in Adobe Media Encoder need to go to the settings and interpret the footage in the settings of media encoder. That way the proxy will actually be corresponding to the original footage and otherwise you will have discrepancies when you work with this with this kind of footage. And boy, believe me, did I pull a lot of hairs out of my head when I was working on my travel video from Mallorca. I didn't know about this trick and about this bug really in Premiere. 
and I was really struggling with this. So you just need to make sure that if you're creating proxies with interpreted footage, you also interpret the proxy in Adobe Media Encoder. And speaking of Adobe Media Encoder, if you're rendering your videos, you can either render it straight from Premiere or you can queue it and render it with Adobe Media Encoder. And if you're working on a laptop, I can highly recommend you choosing the Media Encoder to actually encode your videos because in Premiere, you will basically be stuck. You cannot work on your project anymore. You cannot pause it. You cannot do anything until the render is done and it might take an hour or two hours when I'm rendering my YouTube videos it can sometimes take up to one and a half hours to render a video so it's a lot of time and if you send it to media encoder you can actually close the premiere and free up some RAM so your computer runs faster and also you can pause it because if it's running if the render is running the computer will be bogged down so much that you won't be able to anything no no internet surfing Safari nothing will basically work everything will be choppy so if you need to do something on your computer while you are rendering in Adobe Media Encoder, you can actually pause the render, do what you want to do, and then just resume the render afterwards. So I can highly recommend using Media Encoder for your renders. Also, if some part of your footage is heavy with some visual effects, for instance, it could be motion graphics with a lot of animations, it can be some kind of different effects, maybe you have replaced some part of your footage with Adobe After Effects composition, it's going to be very tough on your laptop to actually play it back. So sometimes if you need to make sure that this part of the video is actually working correctly, you can just render part of this video and just check on the rendered video if, uh, if this actually behaves as you want it to, as you intended. So what you want to do, you can actually hit the I and O key to set the input and output in your timeline and then when you go to the export media window, you can just export the sequence in and out and that way you can export part of the video which should hopefully be a very short process compared to rendering the entire video and then you can check if, the, if it behaves like you want it and then you can resume working on your video. That's, uh, that's, that's something that I do if I have a lot of visual effects in uh, some part of my video. Also when you actually get to render the entire piece, I would highly recommend just leaving it overnight because like I said it can take a lot of time it bugs up your computer you will just be frustrated looking at the progress bar so what I usually do is just start the render go to bed wake up in the morning and the render is done so this is a very painless way to render your videos also if you are delivering media to online platforms like YouTube or Instagram don't be tempted to take the maximum render depth and maximum render quality and two passes like a lot of people on YouTube recommend using that for the highest quality if you are not delivering your content to clients that pay you a lot of money like you know brand deals etc you're just making online content don't bother checking those checkboxes because on a platform like YouTube there is really not much difference and it will it will prolong render times like twice as much or something like this so if you're not using a high quality uh, PC or some other laptop that is clearly designed to be able to handle video editing don't bother with those settings and the last tip would be to actually consider recording in 1080p instead of 4k even if your camera supports it because like I said if you're delivering your videos to online platforms like YouTube there is not much difference between 1080p and 4k and the workflows will be much easier it takes less storage space on your on your external disk on, on your laptop it runs smoother it edits faster and you can actually deliver the entire video painlessly and on platforms like YouTube there is not much of a difference really between 4k and 1080p and most people watch their videos on their smartphones anyway so they, they, they cannot really tell the difference and if you're using a camera like the EOS R that I'm recording right now the 1080p on the EOS R is actually fantastic so even big youtubers actually film in 1080p because the workflow is just so much easier with, with this kind of footage rather than 4k or, or more all right that's basically it for me for this video if you found this helpful make sure to hit the like button down below it really helps me out also consider subscribing to the channel because there will be more videos like this and I usually make photography tutorials filmmaking tutorials, drone flying tutorials and sometimes travel videos or vlogs. So if any of that is up your alley, definitely consider subscribing. I upload new content every week and spoiler alert, I'm going to Iceland in like a month or two. So I'm going to be dropping some epic footage from Iceland. So definitely stick around to see that. But that's for now. Hope you guys have a good day. See you next time and bye bye.